Hello, good day, everyone. Thanks for joining us for uh, our, this webinar on save 60% of Kubernetes storage costs on AWS and other public cloud service providers. You are watching a replay, which is basically uh, where we consolidated the questions uh, and all the good stuff that happened on uh, that webinar all held on April uh, 29th. Uh, and we consolidated the questions we got live from the attendees uh, from the from Europe and Asia, as well as um, the attendees from America, the Americas. My name is Philippe Tayo. I'm Chief Revenue Officer from uh, with Maya Data. I am joined today today with uh, Marat Parsioglu, VP Product at Maya Data, and Brian uh, Matheson, Developer Advocate. Please um, join us, uh, reach out to us on Twitter, and also uh, join the OpenEBS community via the the link on openebs.io, uh, especially on Slack, the very active, very responsive community. I would, I would say even a word-winning community. Um, today, very, I'll do a very quick introduction of what's OpenEBS. I will cover, we will cover then a real life example of a, a real um, East Coast, US East Coast based customer uh, who saves a minimum of 60% of its uh, storage costs um, on, from the public cloud vendors. Uh, happy to share uh, more information about this customer and this customer in private. Um, we'll also talk about what's new with OpenEBS 1.8 and 1.9 releases. Uh, we will cover the questions we got during the Q&A and uh, give you a little bit more details on how to get started. Um, but to set the stage, I think everyone knows that Kubernetes has never been designed to handle stateful applications. Uh, it's actually, but it's very, very, very uh, performant when uh, we talk about stateless applications. Uh, you get all the benefits of Kubernetes, like small workloads, your, 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 everything is loosely coupled. Um, as a Kubernetes SRE, you have full control of your environment and you can commit changes several times and you get an amazing uh, a, a portability of applications across different platforms. Well, th this is not necessarily really, really true uh, when you throw storage in the mix, because then you have a permanent connection between your microservices-based application and shared storage. So you lose control, you lose the, kind of the benefits of microservices, and now more importantly, you have shared dependencies, which is probably one of the reasons why you didn't want that when you adopted Kubernetes, right? But I, this is exactly why a group of people creating an open source project called OpenEBS to fix that problem. Well, uh, it's basically the whole concept of container attached storage where every workload gets its own microservices based storage controller. And it isolates the, all the storage resources, resources available on the need. So every team <clears throat> has, now has control back to its own storage. Uh, you don't have any shared dependencies and it's 100% aligned with the declarative nature of Kubernetes. Kubernetes uh, provides you with a lot of services. It already takes care of application, networking, uh, and security. You're already invested in, uh, in these tools and set boundaries. Well, uh, by uh, the whole concept of container attached storage, we attach a microservices based storage controller. And this is the layer that you control and no shared dependencies and everything is loosely coupled again. Uh, we uh, at Maya Data defined that category um, shortly after starting the open source project. So we defined that with the CNCF, and it's now very well recognized as one uh, one category within the storage. Totally different than uh, other storage uh, solutions. It's not CSI, uh, and it's obviously not uh, ABS based uh, or cloud cloud storage. Right? It's it's totally different. Um, <clears throat> OpenEBS is the most active and the most popular container attached storage project, definitely the one with the biggest community and the biggest install base uh, and with a lot of commercial users and, and paying customers as well. Um, if you look at the architecture, well, on the left side, you have probably like the, what is probably the case for most people, enterprise storage or uh, cloud, cloud disk or uh, block storage coming from cloud vendors. Well, you have that. Uh, it's hardwired, right? You have your connection between your, your PV and the shared storage environment, right? The, the problem with that is, well, it's not necessarily agile. You're locking with one vendor. Uh, your snapshots are not necessarily compatible across different platforms, and you can't, uh, let's say, move your applications easily. You have that dependency, your anchor in one place. Um, if you use the local disks, um, Kubernetes, local PV, well, or direct with the direct attached storage, uh, you still have 
that connectivity and ultimately while well, you don't have any of the features you get from your enterprise storage solution no ha you still lock in no snapshot so it's you know for a very limited set of, uh, of use cases and again you're you're dependent of one type of uh, of specific hardware that you can't find everywhere well the whole notion of uh, the whole notion of CAS is that we basically inserts a storage abstraction layer, works with any kind of storage underneath, right? And works with all of your applications and Kubernetes. It abstracts that PVPVC connection, discovers the resources available and present just the right amount of storage to your application as a standalone, uh, standalone system, but also works very well to abstract your enterprise storage, abstract your cloud storage, your shared storage, and also abstract uh, dynamically, so the concept of dynamic local PV um, with uh, well, for with, for the local disks and um, OpenEBS um, dynamic local PV host path ZFS local PV is not in the data path, so you don't actually don't take a beating in terms of performance and so on, and you get a lot of benefits in terms of ease of use and simplicity of adoption and deployment of your applications. Speaking of that, well, some key components. Uh, to know for the rest of this webinar. Um, uh, on the cluster side, OpenEBS uh, has the API server, the provisioner, and the node disk manager operator. NDM is also a daemon set. Um, so base, basically that's the layer that discovers the resources available uh, from the host and from the environment. And uh, we will also cover in details uh, the notion of storage engines. So OpenEBS today has um, the, all the local, the three flavors of local OpenEBS dynamic local PVs, uh, Jiva and CStore, and there's also another uh, revolutionary storage engine coming called Maya Store in the next few weeks. And stay tuned because I'm going to talk more about Maya Store uh, towards the end of this uh, of this session. Uh, so in short, with this OpenEBS, while it's a it's a CNCF project, um, it is definitely the most active, and it's the one with the biggest community. Um, enables your DevOps team to have their own storage policies and to basically uh, uh, a very high level of granularity for every workload. It is not a scale-out storage system. It's not software-defined storage that has been designed 15 or oh, 10 years ago that we just encapsulate in containers. It's something that is 100% inside of Kubernetes user space. No, no dependency on any kernel module, external plugins, and so on. So it works everywhere, works on any distribution of Kubernetes, on any uh, operating system. So that's the, uh, the where Kubernetes runs. So that's the, that's the beauty of, uh, of it. Very simple to use, designed by Kubernetes SREs for Kubernetes SREs. If you know how to use Kubernetes, well, you know how OpenEBS works, deploys in 90 seconds. Uh, Maya Data, we package, we offer support for the community open source of OpenEBS, version of OpenEBS, but we also package it in a commercial product called OpenEBS Enterprise Platform that is basically open, the OpenEBS, the container attached storage component, Litmus, which is chaos engineering, another open source project that we started, helps you harden your environment and, and, uh, and, and implement chaos engineering if it passed the Litmus test, well, you know it's good enough to deploy in production, right? And then you, all, you also have uh, uh, OpenEBS Director, which is a control plane, offers you visibility and control, data management, HA, backup, DR, everything is there, available as a SaaS product and available uh, uh, on-prem as well for uh, air gap environments. Speaking of director, here's a screenshot, gives you a, uh, give you a, a sense of perspective. In, um, and uh, we're gonna cover that later on, but OpenEBS director is very, if you run on public cloud or if multi-cloud is your reality, or even if you have more than one clusters or service across several AZs, it helps you answer that question, where's my data? And you get that cross-AZ, cross-cluster, cross-Kubernetes distribution, cross-geo visibility at the application level, at the team level. Uh, and this is also, it's, it's a load with, uh, packed with features like data migration as service that allows you to literally move your applications from uh, one environment to another environment based on uh, real life ex real life events like whoa the cluster is down or the uh, and I need a DR or basically I'm spending too much money here uh, or just based on where it is in your CI pipeline. Um, <clears throat> OpenEBS as mentioned is used in production by very um, 
very well-known organizations, people who have crossed the chasm in terms of Kubernetes adoption a while ago, people who understand and know Kubernetes very well, uh, like Bloomberg, Cart, or Court Optro, and also a lot of um, a very interesting public, uh, public references uh, available on the adopters.md page in GitHub, where um, you can learn a little bit about, about the use cases of users like Comcast, Orange, Arista, and even the Cloud Native Computing Foundation itself uses OpenEBS in production. All of these users, they, they turn Kubernetes into a data plane and they save on storage costs with, uh, with OpenEBS. On that, for the first part of our second part of our webinar, over to you, Brian, on how to save uh, on AWS by using OpenEBS. Thanks, Philip. Let me just share my screen out real quick. Thanks, Philip. So now we're going to talk about a My Data customer, a customer who shall rename, mean, remain nameless, who came to us with a high AWS spend. It's a financial services company with a global business presence and a global multi region AWS footprint. The client wanted to reduce overall AWS spend and to make sure they could get the most out of the resources that they were continuing to pay for. They also wanted to reduce reliance on proprietary services so that they can make it easier to do development work outside of AWS EKS environments. And uh, luckily the apps that they're working on are already containerized and running in Kubernetes. But before we get into the details of this customer, I'm going to make some general observations about AWS services and cost savings at this point. So it's pretty common for storage to add up to half or more of your total AWS spend. <clears throat> also, the higher level the data service, you know, the sort of higher up the, uh, the stack, the more of a premium you pay for that service. It's where Maya data really can help. Using open source tools, we build replacements for those high level data services. Um, and uh, now of course, this comes at a cost. AWS makes it easy for developers to, to get started with services. Um, and uh, open EBS uh, comes in um, uh, to replace those services with open source components of it uh, in a cost reduction phase typically. Um, but you can start right off with OpenEBS without uh, incurring all the additional cost of Amazon's uh, proprietary versions. Uh, so the other observation I'll point out is that Amazon's pricing for instances with built-in or instant storage is pretty much the same as the pricing for a similar node plus GP2 disk. It works out pretty close a lot of the time. But if we look at situations where we need a lot of IOPS, you know, big databases, um, we find that it costs a lot to provision an op IOPS to keep up with the instant storage. So if you want 20,000 IOPS, then that's going to cost you a premium in, uh, you know, uh, EBS resources, whereas open EBS can share out the onboard instant storage. So our findings. Of course, the first place we looked is storage resource consumption. On AWS, you pay for what you provision and not what you use. And we found that indeed our customer was over provisioning their AWS resources. Um, so we moved our full S3 backups <clears throat> into differential backups running on a, a local MinIO in cluster um, hosted on OpenEBS. And uh, the incremental, the the incremental backups um, uh, dramatically reduce the uh, the the object store utilization that we were you know the remainder of the S3 um, presence. So separately, instead of provisioning large SSD volumes for stateful workloads, we moved the replicated volumes on CSI-based C-Store volumes, which we've then thin provisioned 
so that we didn't have to use as much um, uh, of the local SSD on the instant storage that we that we selected. So we reduced the overall storage footprint, and uh, we had a about a ten to one reduction that settled into about a five to one reduction as as data and utilization uh, you know continued, and it's sitting at about. 24 terabytes of storage provisioned right now. So we also created different storage tiers um, so that non-production instances wouldn't be using replicated storage. They would use different storage classes. So we right-sized their storage, really. So just to tick off the different uh, areas where we reduce cost, um, we reduce the EBS utilization from Amazon EBS uh, 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 block devices. We reduce EBS costs due to using local PV instead of using you know, EBS volumes. Um, we reduced our S3 costs because we, we switched to incremental backups and moved them to in cluster backups. Um, we saved a lot on on uh, GP2 volumes um, and uh, reduced the size of some of them that were provisioned to be larger than they needed to be in order to get enough IOPS out of them. And uh, we actually reduced the number of compute nodes needed because the storage throughput increased. So. You can see we calculated a total of 68% reduction in in the cost just by reducing the uh, the over provisioning that they were doing really, um, and moving things that didn't need to be redundant off to local PV. Sorry about that. So we ended up with the about the same transactions per second, but we didn't uh, we didn't spend as much money, and so that was the goal. So then. We looked into the CICD pipelines, and uh, when we did, we found that sometimes when the build automation failed, um, <clears throat> you know, they were using uh, uh, EBS volumes, and those EBS volumes would stay around. And so there were a lot of stray volumes that needed to be cleaned up manually. Um, and of course, you know, cloud vendors start charging when you provision um, and uh, and stop charging when you remove the the uh, the volumes. And so, instead of hosting those volumes as regular EBS volumes, we just moved them to C store within provisioning, so that we only had to provision a smaller we provision a smaller amount of storage overall, um, but it's a constant amount of storage where we can create dynamic volumes within the pool, um, but it doesn't change the billing profile of the cluster. So no more billing surprises. So, um, and uh, you know, that led to dramatic savings, 80% uh, savings over, over their, their previous uh, uh, footprint. So, uh, then, then we we took a took a crack at their RDS footprint, and they had a big database that a lot of different services were using. Um, and uh, it was, you know, pretty expensive to run, um, and it was hard for them to scale it. So they wanted to they wanted to get away from it and and move to not centralizing all of their data um, because RDS represented a, an external dependency that was shared across a lot of their services and um, you know everybody everybody was in the database um, so splitting the single instance into multiple databases um, uh, helped offload the centralized database and then we were able to build for the things that did need to be centralized a multi AZ replicated system that they could store, you know, use for general purpose storage, but stayed inside of Kubernetes. And they were able to blow up their RDS instance.
And, uh, you know, you can see from here that, again, RDS is one of those high level services. Um, it's at a significant premium over, you know, what the hardware really is that you're getting. Um, which is which is fair. I mean, it's it's a managed service, but if if it's running stable and you understand how to how to maintain it, um, then you can save some money by pulling that in in house, and you can gain all the rest of the advantages of, of having your your uh, uh, application entirely in Kubernetes. Um, you know, if you can put the database inside. So we used a combination of local PV and C store to implement this and uh, cut the costs about in half. Um, and uh, uh, the next the next thing we tackled was their EFS share. So they, it keeps growing as as shared file systems generally do and. Um, you can't fill EFS volumes up to 100% or they don't perform as well. So typically you try and shoot for, you know, 50 to 80% utilization. Um, and uh, we switched to running NFS on local PV for some shares that didn't need redundancy um, and uh, got some good performance out of that. And uh, we switched to NFS on C store for for situations where we needed a you know reliable block level replication, um, but we reduced the amount of uh, you know uh, NFS storage required in general uh, that uh, that needed to be fully redundant, um, and uh, and we were able to get better utilization out of it. So again, EFS, high level service, um, costs a lot more than implementing it yourself uh, using open source tools like uh, you know, uh, Ganesha and uh, OpenEBS to provide storage for that. And uh, in summary, you can use OpenEBS then provisioning and save up to 80% just by reducing over provisioning of your cloud resources. You can use replication and cloning and snapshotting capabilities to build EBS equivalent uh, services that are internal to your Kubernetes clusters. And you can avoid cloud lock-in on AWS as well as you know, other public uh, cloud platforms. Um, so that you have the, the ultimate flexibility in where you can run your workloads. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Marat, and uh, he's going to introduce some new features in OpenEBS 1.9. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Philip. Uh, it's important to highlight here, uh, we are on a monthly release cadence. Uh, can you uh, move to the screen? Yeah. Hi, yes. Uh, uh, we are on a monthly release cadence based on uh, four week sprints, uh, not only for OpenEBS, also with all projects in parallel we maintain. And this is a significant work on engineering contributors and SREs uh, to orchestrate all releases at the same time. Every 15th of the month, uh, you find a new release of OpenEBS Director, Litmus, our Chaos Engineering project, as well as OpenEBS with its uh, subcomponents. They are all released on the same date. Uh, this month in April, OpenEBS Director got a, a vital upgrade itself, as you may be aware of uh, OpenEBS Director targets, data, agility, use cases, uh, OpenEBS uh, introduced a new feature uh, in April, uh, making uh, OpenEBS uh, storage project easy to install, provision pool with the new CSPS uh, uh, schema, and also single click data plane, control plane upgrades that use operators to orchestrate uh, and complex tasks and workflows for you. Uh, Director is much more than just uh, OpenEBS uh, and it provides log management service with uh, log retention policies beyond the limitation of your cluster's lifespan. 
also complete Kubernetes topology uh, with advanced uh, storage functionality, but uh, can be used in general purpose Kubernetes high level view and to monitor connection between objects. Uh, uh, separate the DMS, uh, granular workload backup feature you can use to schedule remote backups of your workload. Same feature can be used to migrate uh, workloads across cloud and uh, on-prem clusters got also uh, during this release stability fixes. Uh, we highly encourage our uh, community users to get on board with the director and uh, they are in production with, uh, especially if they are in production with their Kubernetes clusters. Okay, can you extend the slides, uh, Brian? And one more. Uh, speaking of features of OpenEBS with the uh, latest release uh, one nine, we have uh, added a point and click uh, for pooling of underlying devices. Uh, sharing data across namespace in Kubernetes via clones. Also southbound provisioning that uh, uses CSI, uh, container storage interface for initial support for uh, dynamic provisioning from PVCs to volumes. Uh, some additional key improvements also include uh, support for reserving uh, block devices that can be used by local PV. Also, uh, migrating Jiva related uh, Kubernetes objects from PVC namespace to OpenEBS and a lot of stability fixes targeting the case where taking out uh, Jiva replicas uh, for maintenance or uh, faulty device uh, reasons without causing uh, a restart to healthy replicas. Uh, we have uh, some alpha features getting uh, more mature and closer and closer to better stability as we speak. Maya Store is one of them. We are very excited about this and as well as community. Uh, new addition to storage engine type of OpenEBS, first Kubernetes and MVME native data engine will enable uh, many new high performance workloads in Kubernetes and uh, in terms of uh, performance we are talking about hundreds of thousands of IOPS, uh, even million IOPS, low overhead highly available uh, data engine option. It is one of the most also active repositories in uh, OpenEBS if you look at the CNCF stats. Another one is uh, ZFS local PV, a flavor of OpenEBS local PV as uh, Philip mentioned also added stability improvement during this release. Uh, ZFS local PV helps you to enable in a cloud native way uh, uh, provisioning and then managing your ZFS volumes also uh, easily you can attach uh, them dynamically to your pods. Community around this uh, part is also very active now. We get new feature requests and report that uh, usage is increasing in large size uh, production environments. Thank you for your support and continued feedback. If you haven't tried them uh, yet, please take a look at these two repositories and reach out to us for a quick demo. Uh, we expect to see increasing momentum around local PV and Maya store um, as they mature and uh, thank you. Thank you, Murat. Um, it's now time for the Q&A. Well, let's go through all the questions we have received over the two uh, previous webinars. Uh, the first one coming from Timo is OpenEBS related to Amazon EBS, like an open source version of it. So I can take it. Um, no, so EBS uh, on Amazon EBS, EBS stands for Elastic Block Storage. Uh, it's a generic term used in the storage industry. Uh, so it is definitely very popular. So as OpenEBS, so yes, it's elastic and it's block storage, but OpenEBS is not related to um, Amazon ZBS, although it's the same concept. And, uh, but I will say that um, this webinar is talking about and mentioning the use case of a user um, who is a customer of, a, of Amazon. Uh, we like Amazon. We have nothing against Amazon. We and uh, we know from a fact that every dollar saved with OpenEBS is reinvested on additional workloads and training. Uh, so it's we don't we don't steal money from AWS. They're a great supplier, a great partner. Uh, but no, it's not. OpenEBS is not related. 
second question, is there an on-premise director available uh, for regulated workloads uh, on, where on an online connection to Maya data is prohibited? Um, so the answer is yes. I've uh, briefly mentioned it. So it's OpenEBS director on-prem. I think one important thing to know is that uh, director on-prem is um, not exactly as director online. Um, uh, and you might know that Kubernetes is always changing, so it's better. My number one recommendation, reach out to us, work with us. Uh, we will make sure that you are successful with connecting all the pieces together. There's 30, 20, 30 diff different distributions of Kubernetes. Um, so we definitely know that inside out and can make, make sure that you are successful with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the on-prem version. Um, C store does not handle more than three disks per node in RAID Z setting. Uh, that was a, uh, that was astonishing to learn how production ready is open EBS now struggling with such a missing feature. Make me suspicious. I would say suspicious. Uh, Murat, do you want to take it or Brian? You can take it Murat. Uh, yeah. Uh, C store does uh, support uh, more than three in a pool uh, yeah you uh, on every node you can have a unlimited number of this in a, a, a cluster pool uh, but in terms of uh, replication if you mean uh, three uh, uh, you can also have n uh, number of replicas across the pools but uh, of course the minimum requirement here you either have one replica which is not highly available and then three plus replicas uh, uh, to have a quorum uh, if one not fails you can have uh, availability uh, we can take it offline in the community but the uh, uh, c store does support uh, more than three uh, and, and important to mention, well, if it's, um, if it's all uh, production ready, uh, the answer is yes. It is, uh, you can go to the adopters at MD on GitHub, um, on the OpenEBS GitHub, you'll see real company with real name, real people uh, talking about their use case in production with OpenEBS. Uh, and uh, to answer um, uh, one of uh, Zoran's question, is uh, Maya data living of uh, revenue now? The answer is yes. So real customers paying with real money. So it's uh, OpenEBS is, is Maya data, OpenEBS Enterprise is definitely production ready, uh, especially uh, in, with some, some use cases where uh, the technology really shines. Um, so thank you, Zoran, for yeah. your uh, questions. To, to yeah. add to that, my, might be confusing for the legacy storage consumers when we say alpha, beta, and then uh, G, uh, uh, GA. So, but Kubernetes itself, uh, we are looking at the uh, uh, alpha, beta uh, phases uh, from Kubernetes perspective and apply the same rules. So uh, alpha or sometimes beta, uh, uh, you also see this APIs with CSI being in alpha and then uh, going to beta. So uh, what what it really means is uh, uh, stability of the APIs and the test cases. But we do have a lot of production users uh, from telco, financial, and in other uh, markets. Yeah, thank you, Murat. Uh, I've got another question from Timo. If we can name the customer, yes, with great pleasure. Uh, it's um, not a public reference, but definitely private reference, and we can book reference calls uh, with great pleasure. Just engage, reach out to us, and it's one, even ourselves, uh, we uh, actually save money on a daily basis on our public cloud consumption. So even us, we're a great, a great reference for that use case. Every organization is different. Uh, and it's not just about cost saving, it's also about increased agility, right? And uh, simplifying the life of everyone using Kubernetes and deploying up, deploying applications and maintaining it to up, up to the day two operations, right? Uh, so yes, we, there are a lot of very interesting case study. Um, another qu a question from Tony, uh, can OpenEBS be used to replicate data between uh, different clusters and or different cloud services? So the answer is yes, uh, OpenEBS, you can see that as a cross-cloud replicated uh, secure data layer, uh, not just cross-cloud, cross, uh, cross data center, cross AZ, cross Kubernetes distributions. We don't care, it's in the user space. So you can uh, definitely 
uh, consider very fancy HADR scenario where your production is on Azure Kubernetes services uh, and your, uh, you have another uh, environment where you have OpenShift deploy on EC2 instances and you have Rancher on-prem somewhere in Colo. Um, so yes, it runs everywhere and it's because it's in user space that we, uh, we control the operating environment very well. Uh, so from, from you know, across AZs, across data center, across distribution of Kubernetes. Um, got a question, perhaps maybe for you, Brian, this one uh, from uh, Nar Narayan. Uh, how does OpenEBS work using a spot fleet? I guess it's spot, in spot instance, uh, if at all, or is it the OpenEBS, uh, is OpenEBS typically deployed as a dedicated storage cluster? Sure. Um, you can use uh, OpenEBS C-Store on spot instances, and uh, because they're C store provides for replication. Um, uh, and if you keep three replicas and lose one of your spot instances, then your, your data is still intact. Um, and when you bring up a new instance to migrate the data to, um, uh, that data migration happens uh, seamlessly and automatically. So, so you can use spot instances in practice people generally don't, um, you know, because the data filling takes time and everything like that. Um, uh, but what a lot of people will do is have a dedicated uh, node group of, uh, of, of, of instances that, uh, that are stable and then use spot instances for their application um, uh, and consume storage from those dedicated instances. All right, thank you, Brian. Um, very popular topic, got the exact same question from uh, Abe and other question um, from the same person. Also, do we get performance metrics and usage on Prometheus? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, you get per volume stats on your C store volumes um, and uh, uh, they're all exposed in, Open EBS director and some pre-configured dashboards that we provide. We do have uh, exporters for uh, storage engines as well. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Um, another, since Murat, another question for you. Uh, what is the current state of the CSI driver? Is it GA production grade? Yes, and every st this is about the granularity part. A bit every uh, storage engine has its own CSI uh, driver, and then uh, they are following also the uh, storage engine's uh, uh, release uh, status. Uh, so uh, we do have a Jiva uh, and uh, for C store CSI driver. They are in a beta phase, and then soon to be uh, getting into. Uh, GA uh, in in terms of Maya, so Maya Store also uh, has a CSI driver, uh, which is in alpha right now. Important to understand maybe that the, um, it's you don't need a CSI. The whole notion of container attached storage is you don't need CSI, but if you want CSI, well, uh, you have that option. Y yes, true, and then by most of our users, CSI is seen as a uh, provisioner for uh, traditional storage uh, vendors that can be, yeah, you may even call uh, cloud storage traditional these days because they are not really cloud native running inside containers, but uh, for some CAS solution, container attached solution, which lives inside Kubernetes, CSI is a not uh, a blocker, uh, uh, just a complimentary, if you are using CSI APIs, you can do it, but you can do everything you can uh, execute with CSI uh, with OpenEBS already. So thank you. Thank you, Tony, for that question. Uh, another from Zoran. What is what SLA is given by MyData when using OpenEBS in production workloads? Uh, I would say it varies depending on the level of service you require, but basically uh, it's uh, up to um, a proactive monitoring of everything. Um, and uh, a two hour uh, response time, minimum two hours, maximum two hours response time, uh, 24 seven. So really it's using, again, it's using production from very large communities environments. Uh, so we uh, are definitely 
uh, up to uh, up to the challenge 24/7. Uh, and the last question: um, How is OpenEBS related or different than OpenSDS, which is software-defined storage? Want to take it, Murat? Open SDS is a, a uh, became, a, as far as I know, a soda foundation, which we are part of it now, also contributing uh, there with uh, uh, Kiran, who is leading our uh, community efforts. Uh, but they are different projects. So Open SDS initially, I guess, wanted to uh, unify APIs for uh, storage in Kubernetes, which uh, CSI took that role uh, these days. And then uh, in, in Open EBS, uh, Open SDS is a pa uh, part of a foundation now. It's called Soda Foundation. And we're part of it, yeah. And Maya did, uh, yes, Maya did uh, participate in, uh, in the Open SBS. Great, great group of people, uh, very knowledgeable for, uh, people. Um, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for your, uh, your questions. And uh, no fake questions, all the real questions we got from, uh, from the audience in the two, uh, the, the two sessions. Um, let's go to how to get started, uh, Mr. Brian. Great. Well, you can start with any Kubernetes cluster. Um, in this example, I uh, created a COPS cluster. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, once you have a Kubernetes cluster, you can head on over to mayadata.io and sign up for the director. And then you can connect your cluster to OpenEBS director uh, just by following through the prompts and dropping a single line command into a shell um, that has access to talk to your cluster via kube control. And then you can do the OpenEBS install right from director. It'll, it'll drive the whole installation for you. And then all you need to do is deploy your application. Um, you know, like in this example, we're deploying Cassandra with uh, the, the OpenEBS device storage class, which will select a local hard disk automatically that's available on each of the nodes that you want to run this uh, stateful set on. So with that, that uh, that's the best to place you. to start. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Best place to start. And there are no better place than the resource section of the Maya Data website to uh, get started. You will find it's, we know it's not necessarily about deploying OpenEBS, it's about deploying Elastic or uh, providing storage for Prometheus logs or MongoDB or Postgres uh, or Redis. Um, so this is where you're gonna find a lot of uh, links to the documentation and video uh, recorded sessions on how to deploy a specific application on Kubernetes. Uh, there's also a, ch uh, a, a chat uh, feature when you can reach out to us, live people, uh, real people behind that. Uh, and this is also where you will find a copy of the uh, latest white paper on more on cost savings with more details about that. Uh, that uh, financial services customer and you will also have recording recording of this webinar obviously and also uh, this is where you can record or you can register for the next webinars which is um, from 1000 to 10 million layups let's talk about performance open EBS well that the the, the the I would say the north of the million layups what comes from uh, Maya store so we will cover in this webinar uh, how to match the right use case or application with the right uh, uh, storage engine the five that we currently have, and, and also uh, we'll give you a preview of Maya Store, and we will uh, recruit uh, test users for Maya Store. As I mentioned, it's a total revolution in how uh, storage will be provisioned and attached to Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes clusters. Um, and well, you know, uh, I think the best way to confirm that we know what we're talking about is. Uh, showing our, the position of Maya data in the top contributors to all the CNCF projects. It's public information on the CNCF website. Uh, despite our small size, Maya data is ranked as number six uh, because we don't count the 
individual contribute contributors at, at row number four. So we're the sixth largest contributor, the first uh, private company uh, part of that list. And you have actually a lot of other companies that are 10, 100 times bigger than us that are uh, below us. So we, it's not just about, you know, uh, open EBS, it's also about the whole community. It's about giving uh, giving back, contributing, uh, but it's also uh, having our PR accepted and merge. And it's because, you know, it's, we, we know what we're talking about. And um, a good way of experiment that, experimenting that is um, working with us. We do basically three things. Um, we can help you deploy your stateful applications on Kubernetes. We have a lot of Kubernetes certified engineers and, and uh, software developers. So we uh, definitely offer consulting for everything state related to stateful applications and data on Kubernetes for new usage, for uh, custom deployment uh, or development regarding that, uh, assessments and so on, and training. Uh, we also offer support for the open source, um, the open source bits of, uh, of uh, open EBS, and we package it in a commercial product uh, that has the open source and a, uh, a, some commercial code uh, all packaged together called OpenEBS Enterprise. So you don't need to be on OpenEBS Enterprise to work with us. We're more than happy uh, to work with uh, the community version as well. We have one goal is to defeat data, gravity, bring agility back to your applications and your Kubernetes clusters. Um, and there's no reason not to, uh, not to engage. Well, uh, the OpenEBS Enterprise Platform, they, there's a free tier, uh, gives you access to support, gives you access to backup, uh, bug patches, upgrades, security, uh, role-based access control, and you also support and uh, we store your logs and uh, we basically, uh, you basically support the, the, an amazing open source community and people you join in. Um, and it's well all about cost savings. I'm sure you have a uh, a good story to tell. We want to learn from your. You want to learn your story. Um, let's have a conversation. Every conversation, demo, presentation, booked, uh, or cost saving assessments that we book for the month of May. Uh, every week, uh, someone gets a, a hundred dollars or equivalent uh, in your local currency gift card. Uh, just by clicking on the get help and filling the form, uh, the names will be will be published. And um, we basically want to learn. It's good for us to learn from your use cases. If, if it fits something that uh, what we've uh, what we've learned and we shared from this ex this example, uh, there are probably a, a ton of other examples. So um, please let's have that conversation. Let's book it. We don't charge for it, and it's uh, always good for us to learn a little bit and and uh, enhance uh, the product for the benefits of uh, the benefit of everyone. On that, I would like to say a big thank you to my, uh, my co-speaker and speakers, and uh, thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to register uh, for the next webinar as well, and click on that get started or uh, get help button on the website. Thank you everyone.